Hey guys, welcome to Saturday question and answer right here on the Digital Outlook channel. And guys, what a question we're gonna answer right now. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Now this question, look, I didn't get any emails for questions, interestingly enough, this week, and I looked for some. The question that I'm gonna answer, and one of the best questions that I've actually had asked and it just popped into my comments literally just a few minutes ago. And I thought, this is a fabulous question. The question was, can anybody explain how and why utility will increase the price of XRP? What an absolutely fabulous question. Because I don't think a lot of people truly understand what XRP's ultimate utility is. Because a lot of times folks look at XRP just for the cross-border payments. Now that, of course, is massive, massive, massive. But it is beyond that. Because you see, with XRP, you can do so many things on it, on the XRP ledger. Oh, and by the way, I wanna clear something up. There was another question in the comments that I saw. And one person was, was asking, hey, can you explain the difference between XRP and the other token, XRPL? And I just want to throw this out there. When you see XRPL, guys, for those that are new in the space and the ecosystem, and listen, no question is a bad question. XRPL stands for XRP Ledger. Now, the native asset on the XRP Ledger is XRP. They are not two different tokens for those that are just new to the ecosystem. So I'm going to throw that out there. Now, getting back to the utility piece. XRP on the XRP ledger as a native token is truly, truly phenomenal. And the reason it's so phenomenal is because of its programmability and what you can make it do. I mean, it can be utilized for practically anything, not just the transfer of value and being a bridge asset. I mean, the messaging you can put in there, you can actually utilize it in other ecosystems and things like that, you know, to carry all kinds of data around and this and this and the instantaneous speed. But the biggest deal, of course, is its value now. When you think of how utility will affect price, basically, when it comes down to that, it's supply and demand, isn't it? So there are only 100 billion XRP, and that is all there ever will be. Now, in circulation, there's about 52 billion and about 48 billion that are locked up in escrow. Now, every month, UC Ripple will release a bunch of escrow, escrow amounts, right? And of course, you see all these articles that come out every single solitary month. Oh my goodness. Ripple just released, you know, a million tokens or, you know, or whatever it is, a billion tokens or, you know, whatever the number is. And oh, they're going to dump that on the market, guys. That is not true. And in fact, it is just sheer and utter people sowing FUD out there. It is true that they release it from escrow because that's how escrow is set up. But guys, they don't dump it on the retail market. They do not dump it on the retail market. In fact, Ripple has sold zero XRP to retail markets since 2019. What happens is usually about 80 to 90% of it get relocked back up in a different ESCO contract. And the remaining gets utilized to provide, you know, XRP to on-demand liquidity you know, partners that are using it. Now they're called Ripple Payment Partners and basically that use it for that cross-border remittances. And it's into the literally, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that get utilized. People that say that XRP isn't used really don't know what they're talking about because we know that it is. And in fact, I think in quarter four of 2023, Ripple sold, I don't know, like literally hundreds of millions of dollars worth of XRP to on-demand liquidity partners right there. And you can go look this up because they publicize that information. They publicize their quarterly reports. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go and dig that up. Now, when it comes to supply and demand, like any market, when something is out there and it's really being used and we get global utility, and the demand for XRP to actually facilitate all those use cases, that's where we will see definitely, I believe, price appreciation. In the tokenization 
of real world assets in, you know, obviously the utilization of cross border payments and on and on and on. And of course, a store of value. XRP is definitely a store of value. And, and look, as a monetary instrument, now what's a monetary instrument? Well, it's a store of value, right? It's a unit of account and it's a medium of exchange. Now, does XRP fulfill that? For sure, it's a store of value. Is it a unit of account? I believe there's a million drops in every XRP. And what about a medium of exchange? Absolutely, people are using it right now to transact. In fact, there's people that get their salaries paid in XRP and on and on and on. The only difference is it's not legal tender. Is it a monetary instrument? Yes. Is gold a monetary instrument? Oh, you better believe it. Store of value, absolutely for sure. Unit of account, hey, we measure it in weight. You know, medium of exchange? I mean, look, uh, you know, the, you could go to anywhere on earth and they will take gold. The deal is this, it's just not legal tender. You see the difference? But it is definitely a monetary instrument. And so when you're looking at that and you're thinking about utility and you realize there's only a hundred billion of them, now, how many people then you think of that? Mm-hmm. On Earth. And you look at the global population and all this kind of stuff. There is not enough XRP to go around. That is for sure. And institutional demand, as it would be used, especially if you were to do away with all the Nostro Vostro accounts, and it was to take over the entire, just remittances alone would be staggering amount of demand. Now, folks come out and say, well, you know, the price will have to be high in order to do that. Because listen, if you were sending a million dollars and XRP was only worth a dollar, what would take one million XRP to do that? Do you know how many trillions of dollars are moved around the wide world in remittances every day? Trillions of dollars, yep. And so obviously, one dollar ain't gonna cut it, is it? Ten dollars isn't even gonna cut it in that regard, is it? and on and on and on. And that's where you start thinking about it from a global scale. And on top of that, think of the global money supply. Now I've encouraged people to go out and do this. Get into Google and you type out there, <clears throat> global money supply visualization, and you see it in, it is truly mind numbing when you think of the entire global money supply and then get this, the derivatives market. Wow, if you see the tokenization and real world asset tokenization, the way they're talking about it. And you're you're talking about derivatives and you talk about, you know, equities and all these other things, commodities for sure. And of course, real estate and on and on. You're into the hundreds and hundreds of trillions, if not quadrillions of dollars. That is major. And so when a lot of folks say, oh, it couldn't reach these market capitalizations, they're forgetting global money supply guys it absolutely can and i believe it absolutely will the only thing we don't know is when how long is it going to really take us to get there now in this current bull run if we don't see utility driven you know in that capacity and another thing to throw in there is this development on the xrp ledger absolutely we need to see development in a big big way now think about it in this way when we're thinking about the internet a lot you know Usually when you were talking about the internet back in the day when it was first coming out, you know, the thing that they were looking for was a killer application. You know what that killer application was? It was email. It was email. And boy, did that send it. Then it became, hey, data acquisition, right? And you had search engine, this and that. And what do we got? Got Alphabet with Google, one of the biggest ones. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what. Just think, Google started out as a search engine. And that in and of itself turned that company into one of the most wealthiest businesses on the face of the earth, just how they transitioned themselves into different areas in this, you know, digital world with the internet and stuff like that. Well, social media, look at those applications, killer applications. There you got Facebook, you got Discord, Telegram, you know, Instagram, all these various social media applications. Seems to be there's a lot of room for a lot of competition. WeChat over in China and all that kind of stuff. And Killer apps built on the XRP ledger in the new digital economy, and I believe this digital asset space, the distributed ledger technology, is going to swallow the internet whole. And when that happens, guys, I'm telling you, you will see some killer apps come along. And I believe that they are going to be built, a lot of them will be built on the XRP ledger because of it's just the, the speed at which it can and the flow through and what you can do, truly phenomenal. 
And when that happens, yes. And the use case, utility. Remember, utility means it's being utilized, right? And that's what it all boils down to. It, it boils down to the utilization of it and the supply and demand equation of that in a global digital economy. And when you think of the values there, it is truly phenomenal. Now, you got Ripple out there, and what are they doing? Well, of course, they're out there helping nation states develop the infrastructure for the evolution of their money in central bank digital currencies, aren't they? Another big thing they're doing is the custody of assets and all that kind of stuff. On top of that, you know, what else do we got? Well, like we said there, we got tokenization of various asset classes and all this kind of stuff and being built on the XRP ledger. And one of the biggest, you know, unicorns, Ripple, as a utilizer of XRP in the, y, what is it, $15 billion valuation has not even yet IPO'd. Now that is truly phenomenal when you think about it. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it really doesn't take too much to see how the utilization utility will drive prices in these markets. It just will, guys. And that's just how markets go. And it's, it's kind of like that. Think about it like this. Look at the use case for oil. Now, do you think, think of the turn of the century. Do you know what they were talking about as an energy crisis? A shortage of whale blubber way back then. Because, of course, that was a mainstay. That was a main you know, use of, uh, you know, fuel that people use, you know, for, for various things. Then you see the industrial revolution and all this and that. And we see, you know, train and, you know, all these, all the automobiles and planes and everything like that. And then oil, oil starts massive, massive use case. What happened? Wow. Did it ever drive some, it literally took some nations that were impoverished to but mind-bending levels of, of poverty to with some of the most opulence, opulence, opulence. Think of Dubai. Think of uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and things like that, and how oil literally transformed them from being some of the most poorest countries on earth to some of the absolute most opulent, wealthiest ones out there. Yep. And guys, what do I think? I think this distributed ledger technology is going to be the new oil. The new oil for this new digital economy, and absolutely, I believe XRP is going to play a very pivotal role. Now, that is my opinion on it, and that's my explanation for it. That's the answer that I would give as to why can someone please explain why utility will cause an increase in the price of XRP. And I sure hope that that really got out there. Now, I'm sure there's a lot bigger, more stuff you can throw on there. Did I? Is that the exhaustive answer? No, it's not. It's probably the Reader's Digest answer because there's so many layers in this space, to be sure. I mean, we didn't even touch on automated market makers and everything else that, you know, you can utilize XRP for and things like that, truly. We haven't even touched, scratched the surface, really. But guys, you're getting an answer in what, 15, 10 to 12, 15 minutes or something like that? And this is the answer I'm giving now. If you want to drop into your comments, you can throw your own answers in there. Because I'll tell you what, there is just so much to be discussed about the utilization of XRP. And by the way, not just XRP other digital assets in this space that can literally and will probably literally change the way the world even works. Now, with all the 27,000 of these things, do I believe all of those are going to make it? Not on your life. In fact, guys, I think it'll probably be less than 100 that really have the lion's share and or that actually make it and of the lion's share, probably 20 Probably 20 will have the lion's share and the rest, you know, will, you know, be facilitating little things like that. And it could be layer twos. Now, to think about that, for those that don't know that language, a layer one blockchain is like, you know, the very, you know, initial distributed ledger technology. And then layer twos are what's built on that. And layer three is what's built on that and so on and so forth and things like that. And so you could see, you know, XRP ledger out there and maybe a layer two built on the XRP ledger really starts to take off and things like that. We could see some amazing things transpire. I'll tell you, I'm excited about the future in this capacity of how innovation could change the wide world. Now, guys, of course, there's all kinds of other things that are going on. There's all kinds of other factors and things like that. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. As you know, that's my take on it. But guys, don't dismiss what the future is pointing out. And we can literally see it right before our very eyes. And by the way, 
we have the past to reflect on, we can look and see these transformations of how society has changed and how it's made the fortunes of some people, especially look at how the internet changed the way the world even works. Do you think you and I would ever have been doing this if it was not for the World Wide Web, the internet, and all these applications not in your life? This is science fiction from when I was growing up. That's for sure. The internet didn't even come out until my wife and I at the time were having kids and things like that back there in the late 80s, early 90s. Can you imagine that? It doesn't seem that long ago, does it? It really doesn't. But of course, 10, 20, 30 years ago, that's what it was like. You think down the road, should Jesus tarry another 10, 20 years? Do I ever believe it is going to be absolutely mesmerizing? And this is where I, I, I look at this space and I think it will probably represent the greatest wealth transfer in the history of mankind. Now that is genuinely what I believe. Well, guys, I sure hope you're going to have an absolutely amazing Saturday. And until tomorrow, when we have sugar on Sunday, some really great nuggets of encouragement. I pray you have a great one and take care.